evening, I'm Praram Vagahal. Let's begin with the main stories. More than 5,000 freed Kamaya families yet to receive 10,000 rupees in compensation each despite the lapse of 23 years. Government department indifferent in the pretext of no archives. Power affinity compromises good governance. Government remains indifferent despite wide demand to investigate Minister for Home Affairs. Probing mechanisms remain helpless. Bharatiya Janata Party expected to win a third consecutive term but to fall well short of target of 400 seats. Opinion polls suggest a narrowing of the gap between the ruling party and the opposition. And Nepal win all group stage matches of the ACC Premier Cup after a six-wicket victory over Saudi Arabia to play the United Arab Emirates in the semi-final. Dipendra Singh Ari climbs to 11th spot in ICC rankings for T20 All-Rounders. The government decision to provide 10,000 rupees per family to the families of freed Kamayas of Pakhi and Berdia taken 23 years ago is yet to be implemented. The amount remains frozen at the account of the Division Forest Office. It has been learned that the Forest Office has hesitated in releasing the payments in the pretext of no archives. The erstwhile Office of Land Reform, Berdia, had released 17,868,585 rupees in compensation for 4,531 freed Kamaya families to the Division Forest Office, Berdia. However, the freed Kamayas have yet to receive the amount and have been compelled to make temporary shelters with basic available resources. Many of such shelters have already been damaged, while others are in a sorry state. However, the freed Kamayas have not received wood or compensation for construction of proper shelters. The highest number of freed Kamayas of West Tarai at 16,262 are in Bardia. Based on the government data, 7,359 families were identified for compensation. According to the Division Forest Office, 2,328 families have received wood, while 5,031 families have been denied the facility as well. Officials of the Division Forest Office have said that they have not been able to release the compensations because of no data on the beneficiaries. Meanwhile, the Office of the Land Reform and Revenue has said that data could be provided immediately upon request. Police investigation has shown that Minister for Home Affairs Rabi Lamechane had taken loan in an illegal manner from Supreme Cooperative of Butwal to invest in a company. However, despite filing cases against 28 individuals including G.B. Rai, Tipe Spoon and Kumar Ramtel, the government attorney office did not include Lamechane in the list of defendants. As Lamechane himself is leading the home administration, police involved in the investigation into the case did not pursue probing him. The government can form probe committees whenever required if it considers necessary to investigate someone. There are precedents of formation of parliamentary committee to probe high-ranking officials in the past. However, despite several demands for formation of a probe committee to investigate the fraud related to cooperatives at the parliament, the government has yet to pay any interest in this regard. Instead, senior leaders of ruling parties themselves have responded, saying investigating Lamichani, who has been linked to the fraud, was not necessary. The first reason for this hesitation is abuse of authority. Politicians consider themselves ultra-powerful when they are in the government. They suppress even the legitimate voices to hide their mistakes. The ruling parties have been defining Nepali Congress's demand for investigating Lamichani as the consequence of the main opposition's frustrations caused by having to quit the government. Another reason is to retain power. Rashtriya Swatantra Party is the decisive entity for CPN Maya Center to retain power and government leadership. CPN Maya Center and CPN UML together cannot generate the required majority and need Rashtriya Swatantra Party with 21 seats on board. Investigating Lamitsani means letting Rashtriya Swatantra Party exit the government as well. Lamitsani does not appear ready to remain outside the government himself while having his party in it. He had a clear term of having himself as the Minister for Home Affairs during formation of the new coalition. Therefore, the two major parties of the current alliance are not in favour of investigating Lamichani. The third reason is the fear of Lamichani, who had abused the funds from cooperatives while he was the operator of a media house before entering politics. Ongoing investigations have generated adequate evidences in this regard. However, a fair investigation from the Parliamentary Committee can show his direct involvement as well. If that happens, Lamichani's political career will take a massive hit, probably a full stop, and the future of Rashtriya Swatantra Party could also suffer severely. This fear has been evident in the statements of Lamichani in recent time. 
Dilemma persists in Kosi province after CPN UML and CPN Maya Center withdrew their support to Chief Minister Kedar Kharki, who has been claiming that he does not need to seek another trust vote for the next two years. However, legal experts have claimed that Chief Minister must seek the vote of confidence within 30 days of withdrawal of support. Kosi province assembly session is slated for tomorrow. Saying that he was appointed the Chief Minister as provisioned by the Article 168, Sub Article 5 of the Constitution of Nepal 2015, Koshi Province Chief Minister Kedar Karki has said he does not need to seek the vote of confidence again. He has added that demanding resignation within two years of having secured the vote of confidence was unconstitutional. However, legal experts are not in agreement with the Chief Minister's stance. Constitution expert Chandra Kanta Kewali has said that the vote of confidence must be sought within 30 days of withdrawal of support by any party participating in the government. He also said that the chief minister had to resign if he could not generate the vote of confidence. Parties of the ruling alliance have been urging him to clear the dilemma. CPN UML Province Assembly Parliamentary Party leader Hikmat Karki has said that the government was in clear minority and therefore required to either generate the vote of confidence or fairness resignation. Kedar Karki of Nepali Congress was appointed the chief minister with the support of CPN UML 14th October last year. But CPN UML and CPN Mahasara withdrew their support on 8th of April. Gandaki Province Governor Dili Raz Bhatta has called for the province assembly session following recommendation of the provincial cabinet. The provincial session has been called for 3 p.m. on 19th of April. Newly appointed Chief Minister Khagaraz Adhikari is to take the floor test on the first day of the session. Meanwhile, a writ filed by Nepali Congress, which terms the Gandaki Province government unconstitutional, is under consideration at the Supreme Court. The Apex Court has issued an interim order to the provincial government not to take any decisions that could have a long-term impact. The hearing on the writ is to continue on 22nd of April. Chief Minister Adhikari had furnished the support of 22 members from CPN UML, 8 from Maoist Center, including the Speaker, and one independent member. Nepali Congress has said the support provided by Speaker cannot be considered, and so the appointment of Adhikari to the post is unconstitutional. There are 60 members in the Gandaki Provincial Assembly. Any candidate would require at least 31 votes to lead the government. It is now time for a short break, but for more news, do stay with us. 148 projects from the government and the private sectors to be showcased at the investment summit slated for April 28 and 29 range from large hydropower projects to organic fertilizer production and research center. The government aims to establish Nepal as a destination for investment. The private sector has suggested the government for improvements in policies to achieve this ambition. Neighboring India is considered a global leader in inviting foreign investment. In the eight decades since its independence, India has received 971 billion US dollars in foreign investment, with almost 50% of that investment coming in the past seven and a half years alone. The private sector has said that adequate foreign investment could be brought into Nepal if stable and investment friendly policies like that of India, with the assurance of security of investment and ease in repatriation process, could be ensured. The government has prioritized green energy and hydroelectricity projects at the third investment summit. With demand for clean energy increasing in South Asia and the prospect of export of around 5 trillion in the next five years, stakeholders have also demanded addressing the existing procedural hassles and winning confidence of the investors. While listing of projects being included in the budget but not being implemented because of inadequate budget in itself a positive step, the government must not delay improvement in policies as suggested by the private sector to establish the country as a good destination for investment. Despite the reduction in interest rate, investors have not taken expected amount of loans from banking and financial institutions because of which investable funds at banks stand at 563 billion rupees. Saying the economy can be revived only by boosting the confidence of industries and businesses, experts have suggested the government to make required efforts. Interest rates on loans have reached figures similar to that of the corona, in fact, before the coronavirus pandemic. Interest rate for loan before the pandemic stood at 11.94%. After the doors for investment had closed because of the pandemic, interest rate had reduced to 8.43% in Shravan, 2078 BS, as per the Nepali calendar. 
However, after the Nepal Rasta Bank introduced a strict monetary policy, the interest rate had reached 13.03%, which has now reduced to 10.78% on average. Despite this reduction, the demand for loans is yet to increase. From the deposits collected, 90% can be invested as loans, however, only 80% have been invested. Investable funds at banks have exceeded 550 billion rupees. Some business persons say that the interest rate on loans is still quite high. However, the main reason for the drop in demand for loans has been identified as the loss of confidence among the business persons. With investable funds increasing at the banks, it has increased costs for the banking and financial institutions, while entrepreneurship and creation of employment opportunities have also suffered. With the drop in transactions related to real estate, problems in return of savings and cooperatives, businesses shutting down and the youth seeking foreign employment, experts have suggested increasing investment by identifying specific sectors to revive the economy. Foreign reserve has increased while import and export both have declined. Therefore, the government must prioritize boosting confidence of industries and businesses to revive the economy. The government of Nepal has made preparations to give two elephant calves to the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh bin Hamad Al Thani, during his Nepal visit. During the two-day visit, the government of Nepal is to present a proposal for almost 9 billion rupees in aid to upgrade the Kanti Children's Hospital. With new labor agreement, proposals are also to be made regarding the parapet used during the FIFA World Cup hosted by Qatar. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has expedited discussions with related ministries for agreements related to physical infrastructures, health and sports, among other sectors. Talks are also to be held regarding establishment of a training center for the production of skilled human resource in Nepal and investment in the tourism sector. In our public voice segment, we have asked what was the reason behind the slump in economic activities. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. आर्थिक स्थिति कमजोर छ मान्छे सँग पैसा छैन त्यसले गर्दा व्यापार चलेको छैन सरकारको नीति कमजोर भएकोले र व्यापारमा लगानी नभएकोले बैंकहरूले चाहिँ समयमा पैसा नलगाएको कारणले व्यापारहरू ठप हुँदै गइरहेको छ जताको चाहिँ मन्दी छैरा छ लगानी छैन अनि त्यसपछि व्यापार ठप्प छ सबै मान्छेहरू विदेशीतिर गइसके अब घरमा एउटा दुईटा मान्छे हुन्छन् संघीय राज्य भयो नि संघीय राज्य कारणले गर्दा नेपालका बजारहरूमा गाउँ <laughs> Pay such a guy when in some it is not time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. They say we asked, what is your take on the meeting of parliamentary committee being pushed due to lack of quorum? 52% were for A, heights of negligence, 30% were for B, not understanding the sensitivity of the issue, and 18% were for C, problems in scheduling. And here is our today's question. What do you term the freed Kamayas not receiving 10,000 rupees in compensation from the government even after waiting for 23 years? Your options are A. Irresponsible state mechanism, B. Lack of pressure, and C. Irresponsible public representatives. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. It is now time for the international news. The Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, is expected to win a third consecutive term but fall well short of its Apki Bhar Char Sopar target in the 2024 Lok Sabha election, according to NDTV's opinion polls. 
The BJP-led National Democratic Alliance is expected to win 372 of the 543 contested seats and the Congress-led India could get 122, with the remaining 49 going to parties not allied with either side. The predicted final result may not be a surprise, given the NDA, its charge led by Prime Minister Nandra Modi for a third consecutive term, is already seen by many as the clear winner, but the numbers suggest a narrowing of the gap between the ruling party and the opposition since 2019. The 365 seats the NDA is expected to win this year represents a 3.4% increase over its 2019 result. It won 353 seats, the BJP got 303 and the Congress-led United Progressive Alliance got 90. The NDA's 2019 score was 5% up from the 336 it won in the 2014 election. The BJP's primary rival, the B UPA in 2014 and 2019 and India in 2024, went up from 60 in 2014 to 90 in 2019 as an increase of 50%. In this election, India's expected return of 122 is a 35% jump. The data from the opinion polls is drawn from nine polls out there. Sports News. Nepal men's national cricket team have won all group stage matches at the ACC Premier Cup. The Rhinos secured a six-wicket win over Saudi Arabia as they remained on B turn in Group A and progressed to the semi-finals of the tournament. In the match reduced to eight overs each innings after a delayed start because of weight outfield and playing conditions, Saudi Arabia were put to bat where they were restricted to 73 runs for the loss of seven wickets in eight overs. Abdul Wahid top scored with 37 runs from 16 balls with three fours and sixes each while none of the other batters scored more than eight runs. Avinas Bora and Karan Kesi picked two wickets each for Nepal but Pradesh GC and Lalit Rajbanshi shared a wicket apiece. In reply, Nepal chased the target with four balls to spare. Gulson Jha remained unbeaten at 32 runs from 19 balls with two fours and two sixes. Dipendra Singh Airi contributed 17 while skipper Rohit Portal was not out at 16 runs. Istiak Ahmad picked two wickets for Saudi Arabia while Usman Nazif and Wazi Ul Hassan shared a wicket apiece. Despite today's win, Nepal had already secured their spot in the tournament semi final. In another match played today in Group A, Hong Kong secured a seven wicket win over Malaysia. With the win, Hong Kong have also moved to the semi final stage as runners up of Group A. Malaysia were put to bat where they managed 140 runs for the loss of nine wickets in 20 overs. Ahmad Faiz top scored with 32 runs while Akil Wahid added 30. Ayush Shukla picked three wickets for Hong Kong, Atik Iqbal and Aizaz Khan shared two wickets each, while Eshan Khan and Yasim Murtaza had a scalp each as well. In reply, Hong Kong stormed to the target in 12.1 overs. Babar Hayat top scored with 83 runs from 35 balls. He smashed nine massive sixes and hit the fence twice. Skipper Nizakat Khan remained unbeaten at 47 runs from 26 balls. Pawandeep Singh picked two wickets for Malaysia, while Khizar Hayat had one to his name. Meanwhile, Oman and the United Arab Emirates also registered wins in their Group B matches of the ACC Men's Premier Cup. Oman saw off Kuwait by 46 runs, while the UAE thrashed Cambodia by 9 wickets. With this, the semi-final equations of the tournament have completed. Group A winners Nepal will take on the Group B runners-up, the UAE, in the first semi-final, slated for 11.45 a.m. on Friday. Nepal progressed to the semi-final after winning all of their Group stage matches, while the UAE had lost only to Group B winners Oman, who take on Hong Kong in the second semi-final at 4.15 p.m. on Friday as well. That is all for the moment. Up next is the news in Nepali. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.